title for today is Hope for the Future. Mm -hmm. Our lesson will come from the book of Romans, mm -hmm. chapter 8, verses 18 through 30. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 30. Mm -hmm. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Thank you. Father God, we come to you this day thanking you, O oh God, for another day that you have allowed us an opportunity to be among the living and not those who are dead. Yes. We thank you, O oh God, for yet another opportunity to sing praises unto your name mm -hmm. and to thank you, O oh God, for the wondrous works that you have done. Mm -hmm. We thank you, God, for just allowing us to see another day yes. and for bringing us back to your house of prayer where we have come to worship you, the true and living God. Mm -hmm. We ask now, O oh God, that as we study your word, that you would open up for our understanding what you would have us to know helping us to hide your word in, in our hearts mm -hmm. that we may not sin against you. Thank you. We thank you, God, for yet this another opportunity, mm -hmm. and we count it already victory in the name of Jesus. Yes. We pray. Amen. 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 Our lesson focus scripture is Romans 8 and 18, which says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm -hmm. Today's lesson teaches believers to hold on until change comes. Mm -hmm. right? It gives us inspiration and hope for the future. For our title again is, is Hope for the Future. Mm -hmm. uh, to, look at, to look to a future hope means that we must examine our present status. Mm -hmm. The present for some looks bad. Mm -hmm. If we look some at our physical being or what is going on in our bodies, the present may look bad. If we look at this present world and the many things that are plaguing people all over the land and country, the present can look bad. It seems as though all creation has forgotten that there is a God. Mm -hmm. The church, who is to be the light of the world, has in ways dimmed its path, but Paul, in today's text, focuses the believer to focus on a new life in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. In this new life, a child of God has what's, what, what is called a firm foundation in the promises of God and the plans that he has for his children. In this new life, Paul wants, to, wants us to understand that the new way is that of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we don't look at things as they are, but we look at what is to be according to what the Word of God teaches us. Mm -hmm. For Romans 7 and 6 says, But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held that we should serve in the newness of spirit 
and not in the oldness of the letter. Mm -hmm. The old life was a life of slavery and servitude of sin, law and death. Now, having died with Christ, the believer has been given the Holy Spirit, and in that, the believers now have a new life. We are free to serve, not in the old way of the written code, but in a freedom and a liberty that only Christ can give. Mm -hmm. For he says in his word that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. We are able now to fulfill the requirements of the law, but only through the power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. not through the powerlessness of the law itself. Mm -hmm. In this new life in Christ, we have been given in the spirit, excuse me, in this new life we've been given, it is based on three things. The promises of God, the purpose of God, and the protection of God. Uh, in the lesson that we will study today, we will look at a hope for the future, looking at present sufferings, but our future glory, understanding that there are groans that are coming from creation, but in it all, God's purpose for those he loves is that, and just as he has promised, that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purposes. Mm -hmm. So now I will share in the printed text, first verses 18 through 21, and our Sunday school qu uh, quarterly gives us the topic of present sufferings and future glory. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. So our first set of, of uh, scriptures gives us the future glory or hope for the future. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing that we sing about in songs such as we just sang, when we all get to heaven, mm -hmm. what a day of rejoicing that will be. Mm -hmm. We sing other hymns like, I'm living to go back with Jesus mm -hmm. when it comes. We sing that this world is not my home. I'm just a pilgrim passing through this barren land. We sing in the gospel choir, it won't be this way always. And troubles, heartaches, and pains will soon be over. And after that, we will shout hallelujah by and by. That is the future glory, the glory that is to come. When it finally settles into our spirit that we are aliens and strangers of this world, we take on the meaning and the words of those songs a little more seriously. As we grow in grace and in faith, we start to learn that the present sufferings, the things that we go through now, are but for a moment. Just as Paul told the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians, he says, for our light afflictions, which, are, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Mm -hmm. In other words, payday is coming mm -hmm. after a while. Mm -hmm. For what God says in his word, he means, and what he says will come to pass. Mm -hmm. So when we recognize that we are strangers and pilgrims, we are just passing through, but we're living to receive every promise that God has made unto us according to his word. Amen. Believers will share in Christ's sufferings, concluding that the sufferings that we now face are, not, are nothing compared to the glory that God would give us later. In our physical, when we go through sufferings, or even when we hear about the sufferings of others, the things that we have um, heard in this world are the worst of the worst of the worst of things to go through, mm -hmm. then as believers, our spiritual minds, which is why Paul said to the Romans, we have to, we have to walk in the newness mm -hmm. 
of the spirit. So in order for us to learn how to get through these physical things that we're going to go through, we have to remember that the promise for us is in the spirit. Our hope is in the future. What God has promised us, our peace is found in the future of the promises of God. When we read what the word of God says unto us regarding what is to come, then we have a peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. So our present sufferings are to be viewed against a, a backdrop of future glory that relegates today's difficulties as insignificant. Mm -hmm. Because nothing we go through can compare, will compare, to what Christ has already gone through so that we can have life and have life eternal. Yeah. Suffering is a part of the process of sharing in Christ's death, mm -hmm. and it will culminate in sharing in his glory. Mm -hmm. Human beings and the rest of cre creation presently face suffering, and both will be glorified in the future. When Adam sinned, God sentenced all creation to have to go through some of these things. Mm -hmm. Then he gave us his son, Jesus, who is the Christ. When we receive Jesus as Savior, we partake, we have, we have agreed to partake in the sufferings that Jesus went through on the cross. Amen. As we go through that suffering, we don't forget the promises that God has made to his children. Mm -hmm. And so we hang on to those and we go through these situations because we know, just as Revelation 21 records when John told us, he said he saw a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah. We're going to see it too. Uh -huh. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. Mm -hmm. And he said, I saw a holy city. Yeah. That was New Jerusalem yeah. coming down from God out of heaven, mm -hmm. prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Mm -hmm. Then he says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Mm -hmm. And God uh -huh. shall wipe away all tears yeah. from their eyes, mm -hmm. and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, neither crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Mm -hmm. And he, he then sat upon his throne, mm -hmm. and he said, Behold, I make all things new. Yeah. Yeah. And he said unto me, Write. For these words are true and faithful. Amen. Hanging on to the promises of God. For what we go through now will yield, yield, as the scripture says, will yield an eternal, won't be compared to what will be revealed in us when we receive what God has for us. Paul then goes on to picture the fallen creation. For he says in verse 22, um, for we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain until now. He pictures this fallen creation as in the pain of childbirth. If we consider earthquakes, floods, fires, droughts, famine, and even pandemics, these are surely not what creation was meant to be, but sin and evil are ruling now on the earth. Mm -hmm. Just as the pains of childbirth end at the birth of a child, mm -hmm. so the groaning and pain of creation will end at the birth of this new earth. Mm -hmm. Creation groans and longs for its release and transformation into the new heaven and the new earth. Mm -hmm. We Christians also groan to be released from pain, mm -hmm. from suffering, from longing, for our own release from the cycle of sin and decay. Mm -hmm. We long for redemption when God will give us our full rights as his children, including the new bodies that he has promised to us. Mm -hmm. In this process, we are not alone, for the Holy Spirit groans with us, expressing our unutterable longing to God and giving us a foretaste of future glory. Uh, but until the time of our release and redemption, we must groan, we must wait, and we must hope. Mm -hmm. We must understand our second outline, the groans of creation. Mm -hmm. Verses 22 through 25 read, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, 
which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, mm -hmm. but hope that is seen is not hope. Mm -hmm. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? Mm -hmm. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we put our faith in Christ Jesus, we are saved. Mm -hmm. And then we eagerly look forward to the freedom that we will have at Christ's return. Mm -hmm. We already have the presence of the Holy Spirit who is unseen, but we must eagerly wait for our new bodies which are also unseen. We must also believe the word. Yes. When he says that we won't be recognized as we are, but as we will be, mm -hmm. then that's what the word of God says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our full redemption has not happened yet. It will not happen until Christ returns. Mm -hmm. But that is why we, are, we still have hope as believers. Mm -hmm. Our salvation is both in the present, present, and present, and in our future. <laughs> it is the present because the moment we believe in Christ as Savior, we are saved and our new life begins. Mm -hmm. This transformation uh, gives us then the opportunity to recognize what the newness of life looks like according to the Word of God. Yeah. Okay, and then in that moment, we start, we're living. But then at the same time, we have not fully received all of the benefits and blessings of salvation that will be ours when Christ Jesus returns mm -hmm. and has us in his new kingdom that he has established for us. For he says, I go away mm -hmm. to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. And where I go, he told them they can't come. But he says, and if I go and prepare a place, then I will come again to receive you yeah. of myself. That where I am, that's where you can be also. Yeah. You know, because when, when he, um, before his departure, the disciples wanted to go. They wanted to be everywhere Jesus was. Mm -hmm. But they say, you can't go right now, just like we can't go right now. Mm -hmm. But when he comes back to receive us of himself, he's promised that he has already prepared a place for us. Amen. So while we can be confident in our salvation, we can also be confident in knowing that the hope and trust that we have in Jesus Christ will be complete and that our bodies will be changed and then our personalities will become as, as the scripture tells us. We will be able to recognize and see him as he is. Mm -hmm. We are waiting for things patiently and waiting is, a, um, is one of the attributes being patient in our waiting that the Holy Spirit gives unto us. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a quality that we also must develop. Mm -hmm. For Romans 5, 3 through 5 says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations, suffering, trials, the things that we go through, worketh patience. Mm -hmm. And patience worketh experience. And when you ain't got no experience, you really don't have anything to talk about. And then if we have experience, we have experience because we know we have a hope. We're living to go back with him when he comes. We're singing to go back with Jesus when he comes. We're praying to go back with Jesus when he comes. We even study to go back with Jesus when he comes. So then if we hope, then it makes us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So the Spirit of God, that the same spirit that we're talking about, uh, helps our infirmities. Mm -hmm. It helps us in our moments of weakness so that we can learn what God is going to be looking for in his children when he comes back, when he sends his son back to receive us. Mm -hmm. For now, uh, the last part of our, our, te our printed text, verses 26 through 30, says that the spirit helps our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, mm -hmm. but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Mm -hmm. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, 
to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Mm -hmm. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in the same way that our hope gives us strength, the Holy Spirit helps us in our distress. At times, our weaknesses are so intense that we don't even know what to pray. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our bodies and our minds and our mental are so weak yeah. that we don't know what to pray. Yeah. Sometimes we can't think of a scripture mm -hmm. because we're overwhelmed by the sufferings the infirmities, the things that we're going through. But isn't it comforting to know mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit yes. helps us in our weaknesses? Yes. It says, the scripture says that we don't know what we should pray for mm -hmm. as we ought. Mm -hmm. That means according to the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit itself makes intercession mm -hmm. for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Mm -hmm. At the times when we are weak, the Spirit voices our request for us. Mm -hmm. He intercedes on our behalf by appealing to the one and only one that can help us. Yeah. We say it, yeah. we believe it, we stand on it. Yeah. The Lord is our helper. Yeah. God is our help. Yes, he, is. he himself. Yes. We may not know the right words to say or what to ask for according to his will, mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit does. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And he groans to God. Those groans become effective intercession on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Isn't it ironic that when man groans, it is not understood by another man? Mm -hmm. when, when, when somebody groans, most people, if somebody's around, they say, what you say? Mm. What you want? Mm -hmm. Say that again. I can't understand you. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 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 Who is a part of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. God who's all powerful, all knowing, yeah. mm -hmm. can do it, can be anywhere at the same time, can interpret my groans, your groans, your groans, and your groans. Mm -hmm and intercede on our behalf. Yeah. That yeah. means stepping uh -huh. in for us mm -hmm. to talk to God for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. comfort. Yeah. That's comfort. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we don't really have to worry because if we're doing our part as his children, he's going to do his. Yeah. Yeah. So he intercedes with groanings that cannot be uttered. Mm -hmm. This companionship of the spirit in prayer is one of the uh, themes of the book, excuse me, of chapter 8 of Romans. Mm -hmm. uh, the Spirit literally joins in to help us and expresses for us what we cannot fully express for ourselves. Mm -hmm. It baffles me when people tell me, I know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. I know what your mm mean. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You think you know. Yeah. And you work out whatever you think. Don't, you know, don't you tell me about you to do whatever you think you're going to do. But I know. I know what I'm relaying. And the Holy Spirit knows what, what I'm saying and what my desires are. Therefore, he talks to God on my behalf. Thank you, God. See, the Father knows all of our hearts. And he knows what the Spirit is saying. God can look deep past our inarticulate groanings yeah. to understand what we what we need, yeah. mm -hmm. what we're feeling, yeah. what we want yeah. to go forward, and even if what we want is according to his will. Mm -hmm. He knows that, and therefore he speaks on our behalf. Mm -hmm. When we don't know what to say, he's, pray he's praying with us uh -huh. and for us. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. I'm saying something. Mm -hmm. Out of, let's see, for example, anger and hurt. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I don't say it right. Mm -hmm. But inwardly, I'm also talking 
to the spirit. Uh -huh. I got a groan going on that uh -huh. can't be interpreted by man, yeah. but he interprets it yeah. and he harmonizes it uh -huh. and speaks to the father so that his will can be done. Uh -huh. With God helping us pray, we don't need to be afraid to come before him. Amen. Amen. Because the God that we serve, who sent his son that we might live, mm -hmm. that we might have life, knows. Mm -hmm. What does he know? That all things work together. All things, mm -hmm. all things are working uh -huh. together. Because yeah. I, I put my spirit in you. Uh -huh. Therefore, I already know that your desire is to do the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. So all things are working together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. See, the Spirit's efforts on our behalf are, are carried out in full agreement with God's Spirit and God's will that, everything's hap that everything that happens to us in this life is directed toward the goal that God has for us. Uh -huh. For I know the plans mm -hmm. that I have toward yeah. you. Yeah. See, yeah. See yeah. folks don't want to talk about the Old Testament, but God yeah. was there too. Yeah. So was Jesus, so was the Holy yeah. Spirit, because they are one. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. What happens may not itself be the good, may not even look good, mm -hmm. but God will use and cause everything to work together for the ultimate goal of his children mm -hmm. to meet his ultimate purpose for their maturity, uh -huh. for us to grow. Yeah. He wants us to grow. Mm -hmm. The point is, he's working it out for our good. Suffering will still bring pain, mm -hmm. loss, sometimes disappointment, and even sorrow. And sin will bring shame. But under God's control, the eventual outcome would be for our good. Yeah. God works behind the scenes, ensuring that even in the middle of our mistakes and tragedies, mm -hmm. some tragedies we cause upon ourselves, mm -hmm. God's will re will result in good for those that love him. Yeah. At times, this will happen quickly, and then sometimes it will take a while. Yeah. But it's still God's time. Yeah. Yeah. But there will also be events whose results will be good we will not even know about until eternity. Mm -hmm. We had the same conversation with uh, another believer on last week who mentioned um, being a little disheartened because of not seeing the results of my efforts in ministry. Mm -hmm. It's just like a parent who's mm -hmm. trying to do the will of God according to the word of God. The Bible has said, train them up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Train up your children in the Lord for when they are old, they will not depart from you. Mm -hmm. Then and we, and we have several scriptures that even speak to parents about their children and about your seed will be blessed. Mm -hmm. But in the present, it don't look like it. Mm -hmm. And in the present, in our flesh, we get tired and we get weary. But we have to still hold on to the word of God. Yeah. If God says, you train them up, and when they get old, they will not depart, you got to just wait on that. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got to believe the word of God. Right. You got to believe the promises of God are yea and amen. Uh -huh. And though it may not look like it, it may, you may not even see it. Mm -hmm. It's going to come to pass because the word of God says so. For whom God did foreknow, he also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Meaning that that transformation will come, though it might not be visible. So we're talking, we gotta, we gotta be able to uh, spiritually transform our thoughts from the fleshly thoughts to those of the spirit. Uh -huh. We gotta allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us looking at what is in the flesh but walking by faith to what is going to be in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Believers are people God already knew in advance. Mm -hmm. His foreknowledge refers to that intimate knowledge of us and our relationship with him based on him choosing us. He says in John that we didn't choose him. Yep. He chose us. Uh -huh. And because he chose us, he also ordained us uh -huh. to go forth and bear much fruit. Uh -huh. Okay? 
That means he already know what's going to be for his children. Mm -hmm. When all believers are conformed to his likeness, then the result is fruit bearing. Yeah. Because if you looking and acting like Jesus, then nothing but victory comes out of right. the behavior. Right. Okay? So the resurrected Christ will be the firstborn of a new race of humans who are purified from sin. Mm -hmm. Because we are his children, we are Christ's brothers and sisters. We are joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to be chosen? What keeps foreknowledge and predestination from being determination or determinism? We, this, these are things that we think about, but we have to remember that God knows who will, because he knows all, accept this offer of salvation. Because he knows that the plan of predestination begins when we trust him and comes to its conclusion when we are fully like him. Okay? Can't see that now, right? But we're walking by faith. God selects a person, creates a template for his or her life. This is, this is what, uh, what our Sunday school commentary tells us. Somebody else saw it. I can't remember. <laughs> it's in there. The, uh, and provides salvation for the elect. The problem is humans reject God. And therefore, don't respond to the call to live for his purposes. So, predestination as a doctrine is difficult for some people because it appears to reduce free will. Mm -hmm. But, it's not free will. It's not reducing it. No. It, mean, it means that God's purposes for humans was not an afterthought. No. Okay? Mm -hmm. We all have the opportunity to choose Jesus and when we choose him, then we are predestined to walk according to what the scriptures ordain for us. Mm -hmm. If we have trusted Christ as Savior, we can rejoice that God has always known us. Mm -hmm. See, outside of him, you can't know that. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you don't have the Holy Spirit who is our teacher and guide. Mm -hmm. His love is eternal. Mm -hmm. Outside of Christ, you won't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because... You cannot understand the things of Christ operating fully in the flesh. His love is eternal. His wisdom and his power are supreme. Again, outside of him, you won't know that. Okay? But when you receive him, then you will receive the Holy Spirit who will reveal these things to you as you grow from faith to faith. God's plan for salvation of those who believe in Christ Jesus according to these scriptures, has three steps. They are chosen, we are chosen, we are called, and then we are glorified. Uh -huh. When we are finally conformed to the image of Christ, we shall receive his glory. Uh -huh. Verse 30. Yes. So in conclusion, if we surrender to Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit, results for us will be a glorious salvation. Mankind cannot make it to heaven on their own. That's right. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. We must trust in a transition that only comes through faith and hope in Christ Jesus. He is our hope and he is our future. Amen. He is our hope for the future. Yes. And our hope and our future future. Amen. 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 I submit this as our lesson for today. Hope for the future, mm -hmm. for the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us yeah. according to the word of God. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Father God, we do come again thanking you, O oh God, for your word. And thank you, O oh Lord God, for your Holy Spirit mm -hmm. yeah, who good. teaches us, yes. who leads us, who guides us, yes. mm -hmm. who breaks it down for us and mm -hmm. goes beyond mm -hmm. where we are mm -hmm. and shows us all things. For you have already told us that you will reveal unto us mm -hmm. the truth of the matter. Yes. 
Thank you, thank you, oh God. Thank you. Thank you that you have the master plan and that you laid it out and all those things that come in between that you even reveal those things unto us little by little as we too grow from faith to faith. We thank you, God, for loving us that much. Yes. For loving us that much that you even tell us. Mm -hmm. you, you, you encourage us that as we go through times of suffering, trials, and tribulations, that we will receive glory. Mm -hmm. And the glory that is not to be compared to what will be revealed in us. Mm -hmm. And that revelation will only come from you, oh God. Mm -hmm. Thank you for encouraging us to trust you the more, oh God. You to trust you with everything that goes on in this world and in our lives. Mm -hmm. For we know that we also played a part, for we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Yes. But we are truly, 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 truly thankful that you sent your son, you. Jesus Christ, yes. that we could have life. You yes. sent him to save us from our sins, oh God. Mm -hmm. And because we are saved, we are now joint heirs with Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And, and join heirs means that we're going to have to go through some suffering yeah. on this side, oh God. Mm -hmm. But you have already prom promised that the glory will be revealed. Yeah. And that, that we will be excited about the new heaven and the new earth. Yeah. And the day that we will receive you to know that we don't have to suffer anymore. Yeah. That we don't have to live and look at the things that are going on in this world that are heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. That are are damaging sometimes even to our spirits, oh mm -hmm. God. But we thank you that you're always there to encourage us and lift us up through your word, oh God. Thank you. We just thank you. thank you. We thank you for the plan. Thank you. We thank you that you didn't just give the beginning, but you're also the end. Yeah. That you are the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. And that, that, that the end, there is an end to this, mm -hmm. oh God. And while we have time, we want to do our part mm -hmm. to help others to get to know you in the free pardon of their sin. Thank so you. we ask you to lead and guide us. As we go into another week, oh God, we pray, oh God, for the household of faith all over the land and country. We pray, oh God, that your will be done in the lives of all of our sisters and brothers, oh God, and that, that, that we would learn to look to you, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you, God. If we hadn't yet learned that, even though we received you, we know we got a part to do so we can grow. Mm -hmm. And in our growth, Lord God, my prayer is that others will come to know mm -hmm. truly who you are yes. in the free part of our sin. Thank we thank you, oh God. We thank you for our church family, mm -hmm. our leaders. Yes. We thank you, oh God, for everyone who is instrumental mm -hmm. in helping us to grow in grace, oh yes. God. And, and helping to make known the will of God mm -hmm. to the children, the people, and mankind. We bless your name, O oh God, for you are worthy to be praised. Amen. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen.